The next characteristic of the bad spirit might be one of the most important things we talk about during this whole series, even though it doesn't seem like it at first, and it's what I call you resort to smoke and mirrors. Now, what do I mean by that? I use the term smoke and mirrors kind of in jest because that's what magicians do, right? They misdirect your attention with smoke and mirrors. They get you to look over here while they're doing something over there. They misdirect. They give a puff of smoke, and behind the smoke, they do something that they don't want you to see. It's all about misdirection. If your bad spirit is running your relationship, then you're someone that is subject to misdirecting your partner's attention, misdirecting your partner's understanding about what's going on in a relationship. And I'll tell you how you know if you do this or not. Ask yourself this question. Do you talk about topics rather than issues in your relationship? To answer that question realistically, you have to understand the difference between a topic and an issue. Most people, if they have a disagreement, they disagree about topics. They disagree about topics. Topics are things that pop up every day. A husband can come home and come in and he's irritated. Who left the tricycle in the driveway? Okay, you can talk about that. That's the topic. What would be the issue that makes him irritable about who left the tricycle in the driveway instead of just simply putting the car in park, getting out and moving the tricycle? Maybe he's got a chip on his shoulder. Maybe he's resentful because he has an issue with a lack of sexual intimacy in the relationship. So why would he talk about the topic of the tricycle and not the real issue of the lack of sexual intimacy? Well, I can tell you because the tricycle is safe. He has nothing at stake when he's talking about the tricycle. If he wins that argument, great. If he loses that argument, so what? He didn't have much invested in it one way or the other, so he just gets to vent his frustrations. On the other hand, if he goes to you and says, I am really hurt by the fact that you seem to no longer be attracted to me. You don't find me sexually relevant. You have no desire to be intimate with me. And you say, yeah, that's right. Really don't. I'm sorry. Used to. Don't anymore. Wow. That can really hurt. That can really be hurtful. Now there's a lot at stake. And sometimes people just don't have the courage to deal with the true underlying issues. So they nibble at the edges. They try to attack their partner. They try to get even. They try to vent their frustrations in a safe way instead of dealing with the real issues. So they'll choose a safe topic, but they never get any real resolution because the issue never gets addressed. So here's how to know if you're dealing superficially in your relationship instead of dealing at the issue level. One is you just keep coming back to the same problem. If your problem is a lack of intimacy, if your problem is that she seems to be too focused on her mother and father instead of you, if the issue is she seems to want to spend more time with the children than she does with you, but that just doesn't ever seem to change, well, maybe it's because you've never really dealt with it straight on and expressed your concerns. So if the issue just keeps popping up over and over and over again in your mind and heart, and doesn't get resolved in the relationship, it may be because you've never really dealt with it. You've nibbled around the edges, but you've never really gotten the courage to say, look, straight up, here's the issue. So if your interactions constantly focus on superficial and trivial topics, ask yourself, what are you hiding from? What are you afraid to give a voice? If your interactions begin to approach the real issue but then they get disrupted by anger or abrupt changes of subject, or you just say, never mind, and walk off. That's what we call approach avoidance conflict. You have this feeling of approaching. You're drawn to it. You approach it. But the closer you get, a feeling of avoidance kicks in. It's called approach avoidance conflict. You want to talk about it, 
But the closer you get to doing it, the steeper that hill gets. It's like you're walking up a hill, and when you're a mile away, it's just barely uphill. When you're half a mile away, it's a little steeper. When you're a block away, it's like you're almost going vertical. Because the closer you get, the harder it is to get right to it until you just slide back down that hill because you can't make yourself do it. That's called the approach avoidance conflict. The closer you get, the steeper that hill is to climb. If you find yourself talking passionately about the problems of other people that mirror what is really bothering you, but your partner says, you know, the way you're talking about that, it seems to me like you take that awfully personally. Are you really concerned about that happening in their relationship, or are you concerned about that happening in our relationship? And if you bail and say, oh, no, 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 I'm talking about them, that approach avoidance conflict is kicked in, and you don't have the guts to deal with it. That's kind of like going to a psychiatrist or psychologist and saying, hey, can you answer a question for me about my friend? My friend is depressed. My friend is anxious. My friend has a problem because you don't want to admit that it's you. By the way, we never believe you when you say that. We always immediately assume it's you. Even if you are asking for a friend, we don't believe you. So if you tend to talk passionately about a problem that another couple is having, but you deny that it's relevant to you, then that's smoke and mirrors. You get very defensive if your partner asks you straight up, hey, is there something else bothering you? You're arguing about me leaving a tricycle in the driveway, but it seems to me like you're really upset about that to a level that is disproportionate to the transgression. So is it really the tricycle or is there something else? And you get really defensive, chances are you're running from the issue. So you have to ask yourself, because if you are, ducking the issue in favor of the topic. You're cheating both yourself and your partner. You're cheating yourself because 50% of the solution to any problem lies in defining it, getting it on the table and dealing with it. And you're cheating your partner because they don't have a chance to help you with the issue. They don't have a chance to say, well, okay, I I didn't know that was a problem, but now that I do, I can do something about it. Or they might say, yeah, I, I get that that's a problem. Let me tell you why. You say you're upset because I don't seem like I want to be intimate with you. You're quite right. I don't. Let me tell you why. Maybe it's because you smell like a goat. You don't come to bed in an attractive way. Take a shower. Or maybe it's because you can't be rude to me all day long, and then when you flip the lights off, all of a sudden, I'm supposed to melt in your arms. I can't make that switch when you flip the lights. So if you want me to be cozy in bed, then you better be cozy during the day, buddy. You can't ever have that honest conversation if you duck the issues. And I know the number one fear is rejection. So yeah, there are some issues there. There's some scary things there. But you got to be willing to take the chance. What do you got to lose? Your answer is, well, everything. My self-esteem, my self-image, my relationship, my ego. What are you going to lose if you never deal with it? You're going to continue to live in fantasy land and feel rejected anyway. At least my way, you have a chance of solving it. You have at least a possibility of getting past the issue. Your way, you have no chance of getting past it. 